Uh, I am live, which is great, uh, which is great to see. Uh, let me just test one thing here, and I will be interested to see if this is actually working. Um, what we're going to do today is we're just going to talk about how to find problems to solve, otherwise known as picking a niche. Um, a lot of people overcomplicate this. They make it much more difficult than it has to be. And so I'm going to show you some simple ways that you can use to find a niche. Um, if you want to be successful online, what you have to do is you have to pick one niche and then pick problems to solve within that niche. And once you do that consistently and persistently, you can be successful online. Um, oftentimes, unfortunately, people will try doing this for a couple days, maybe a month or two. And then when it doesn't happen for them, they don't uh, achieve their goals immediately. They, um, they quit and they say that it doesn't work. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about some easy ways that you can find problems to solve, AKA picking a niche. Um, one of the easiest ways to, to pick a niche or find problems to solve is to simply look at the problems that you've solved recently. Think about how simple that is. You buy stuff in most instances, but in every instance, you're buying something to solve a problem. Um, for example, when you go to Starbucks and you buy that, that coffee, that coffee solves a problem. Either the problem is um, you want that energy boost. The problem could also be luxury that's associated with you being able to purchase something like um, coffee because you, in reality, you could get coffee from anywhere, but you choose to go to Starbucks because it solves a, a problem. Um, you know, it gives you that elevated status and that's something that you're looking for, but that's a, a problem. Look at things that you've purchased recently. Those all are associated with a problem. Um, I talked about yesterday when we talked about um, Google Trends those are all recent problems, the NFL draft, things of that nature. But, you know, much more realistically, if you look at things that you purchased within the last two weeks, those are all associated with some problems. Another thing that you can do is you can take a look at hobbies. Hobbies are really a really great way uh, because people are willing to spend money on hobbies. Now, when you're thinking about this, people usually will only buy if you can save them time save them money, make them money, or or it's a hobby. Think about all the hobbies out there that you do, whether it's pickleball, which is relatively new, if it's uh, sewing or crocheting, all of these things that you use as an escape. Uh, yesterday, I talked about bass fishing as a hobby. That's a great way to, um, that's a great niche to get into because there's always stuff to buy. There's always stuff that they need and you can create content helping them out. So that's a really cool way. Um, you can always research popular niches. Now, one thing that people are going to say is that popular niches are too competitive. Now, I don't believe in competition. Um, or excuse me, I don't believe in oversaturation. People are going to say that niche X is, is oversaturated. I don't believe in oversaturation. I, what I believe in is I, I believe in you finding different angles to be successful. For example, um, if you want to get in technology, every single year, Apple comes out with new products. And that new product is going to be your gateway. Every single year, they come out, uh, not, they, not Apple, but every single year, somebody comes out with a new TV. You create content about that new TV. You become an expert in that new TV. And then you can, um, th then that's how you get into the market. But I don't believe that anything is too saturated. There's new information. For example, if you think about new information, if you're watching this, uh, Chad GPT, new information. There are people that were um, nobodies, we'll say, quote unquote, nobodies six months ago. But what they did is they started creating content about Chad GPT and how they could integrate Chad GPT into something else, whether it's starting an online business, whether it's, you know, growing you know, there's just so many different use cases for it. But I don't believe in something being oversaturated or too saturated. 
that term, oversaturated, too saturated, too saturated, are fear terms that you use to tell yourself not to do something. And that's unfortunately what a lot of people do. They come up with different fear terms and fear tactics to tell themselves not to do something. If you want to get into a niche, let's say you want to get into pickleball, do it. Start doing pickleball. And then within pickleball, you can do pickleball for seniors. So pickleball for people over 50 years old or, you know, pickleball for high school students. There's also, there's so many different subcategories. So if there is an area that you want to get into, it's not too saturated. It's not too late. Um, so we got some, we got a guy that needs attention. I just hopped on. So um, it, it's unfortunate that with TikTok, there are, are groups of people that don't get attention in, in real life. And so they hop on live streams and they beg for attention. They beg for attention from the people that are um, presenting the lives. Anyway, if we continue on, um, look for problems to solve. Like I said, another thing that you can do is look at your recent search history. Look at questions that you've asked Google or YouTube. Because once you learn that answer, you are now in a position to help somebody else. Okay. Another area that you could get into when it comes to uh, picking a niche or finding problems to solve is to look at your favorite blog, look at your favorite websites, look at your favorite YouTube channels. And when you do that, um, and, and when you do that, you're going to find that, A, you are pretty knowledgeable in a situation or a topic, and you have enough knowledge to teach someone else. Uh, another issue that one of my clients or students ran into is, as they felt, hey, I'm not knowledgeable. I'm not an expert in my topic. For example, let's say their their topic is um, basket weaving. Um, let's say their topic is basket weaving. They feel like they don't. They're not an expert in basket weaving. Well, you don't have to be an expert. You just have to know enough or be willing to learn enough to teach someone else. Now, the only caveat to that is the medical field. I'd recommend that if you are going to be talking about medical stuff at a high level, you should probably have some area of expertise, or you can make it cleanly, plainly stated that you are an expert, you're sharing your knowledge, and that uh, the content you're creating shouldn't be assumed as expert advice, okay? Um, what else do we have here? So I'm looking at my notes. Um, another way that you could approach this is you could approach it from the aspect of um, people that are in your similar position. What are some of the problems that they're going through? For example, for me, we have twins. So that, that creates a unique situation that not a lot of people, relatively speaking, are going through. And so I could create content when they were younger, about the best strollers for twins, about the best car seats for twins, if there's a, a search, such a thing, uh, best SUVs for twins. Um, so if you think about what you're currently going through and you think about your situation, your experiences, that could be your niche. Think about all of the problems that you have to solve if you, if you have twins. There's, like I mentioned, there's different types of strollers. I remember when I used to take the kids to uh, the grocery store, I had to wheel the stroller with one hand and push the cart with the other hand because there wasn't enough space. And so when you start thinking about it from that situation, from that aspect, you'll realize that while, <laughs> yes, you are unique, what you are, who you are is unique, but there are literally millions of people that are going through the exact same situation. And so you can create content based on what you do, what you know, what you understand, the problems that you have personally gone through, because there are millions, if not billions of people that have gone through that exact same thing. Okay. So um, for me, my son's learning T-ball. That could be a niche that you get into. Um, you know, the best bats for uh, T-ball the best bats for five-year-olds, the best cleats. Um, people are going to be asking, what type of cleats do five-year-olds need? Or what type of shoes should you wear for a t-ball? Or the best type of drills that someone should should 
practice with their son who's learning t-ball. These are all different problems that you could create content and and be successful. That's the really cool part about this whole thing is, again, while your situation, while you may feel like you're a snowflake and you're unique and you're special, but in reality, there are millions of people that are going through that exact same thing. Uh, my son with soccer, the best pop-up nets for soccer, different drills, different skills that they need to learn, all problems uh, that you could create content and build an audience. Now you can build that audience and you can monetize that audience on TikTok, on YouTube, Instagram, wherever people are hanging out. And that's the beauty of the internet. Not everybody's hanging out in one spot. And so you can create content wherever you feel comfortable and you can be successful online. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find more. But there are literally there are literally millions of ways, not millions, there's a bunch of different ways for you to find find a niche. Um, again, I really like thinking about new angles on old topics. That's really popular. That, that'll help you get going. Uh, think about, so everything happens on a cycle. Everything's cyclical. When I used to work in higher education and, and even when I went to school, um, when I went to college, you'd say, okay, um, you know, uh, high school would end, high school graduation would be in late May, early June. From that point on, people that are going to college, going away to school, they're going to start needing supplies. And those people may not know what they need. Okay. If you if you are the first person in your family to go away to college, you don't know or may not know what you need. For example, back in my day, when I, when I went to college, and at home, we used dial-up internet to connect to the internet. This is how old I am. We used dial-up internet. When I got to college, they used Ethernet, and I had no idea what Ethernet was. And so I was trying to stick the phone jack for dial-up into the Ethernet port, and you know the RA at the time was looking at me like I was nuts. If I could have searched on the internet back, back then to figure out what I needed to prepare myself for college... A, someone could have earned affiliate commissions or, you know, they could have monetized that however they, how different ways they want to monetize it. But that would have solved my problem because I was the first one in my immediate family to go away to college. There's all sorts of stuff that you don't necessarily know um, or understand until you get there. But again, everything's cyclical. So um, you know that high, college students are going to start going away to college in August. Um the younger classes are going to go away to school in August, September. And so you can start thinking about the problems that are coming up. Uh, school shoes, you can think about, um, you know, all sorts of stuff. And even with respect to teachers, teachers need to fill up their classroom with learning materials and learning environment. And so you can actually put together a list of stuff for teachers. There's affiliate programs and stuff that teachers buy. Um if you start thinking and planning ahead, you can be successful. We know that the big time of year coming up after, you know, back to school, we're looking at holidays. So um, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, those all present different problems. And you can create content to solve those different problems. People are going to be looking up, for example, with regard to Halloween, you know, the best Halloween costumes for um an age group. For example, if I go over to a keyword research tool and I type in Halloween, and you won't be able to see this, but if I just type in Halloween, you're going to be able to see or would be able to see that tons of people are asking questions about Halloween costumes. So we go Halloween, and then people are going to be asking questions about the best Halloween candy, the best Halloween costume. Um, and some of those actually have affiliate programs. So we're looking at like um, coloring pages for Halloween. People are going to be asking about the best horror movies for Halloween. And what you could do there is you could put together a list of the five best horror movies for Halloween. And then let's say they're on a streaming platform. You could, you could go out and be an affiliate for that streaming platform. So there's so many different ways to identify problems to solve. And you, there's so many different problems out there. You just need to identify one and become the expert in solving it. 
and we talked about Halloween. You could do the same thing for Thanksgiving. People are looking for Thanksgiving decorations. They're looking for um, like placemats and, and all sorts of stuff. That giant turkey. Some people put up an inflatable turkey. People, other people are going to be asking, where do I buy that inflatable turkey? And you can show them where to get those inflatable turkeys. And, you know, if you wanted to, you could be an affiliate for that that, that uh, business, and you could earn a commission anytime someone uses your affiliate link to buy the inflatable turkey. But there are so many different ways to identify different problems. If you think about just your normal everyday life. So back when I used to work as a software developer, I obviously needed clothes to wear um, to be a software developer. And so while you may feel like you know everything or that everybody knows everything, there's always someone that's going to be coming up behind you that doesn't know what you know. And so if you, you can turn around and teach them that thing, you can be successful online. Uh, people are going to be asking about interview questions, what to wear to an interview, uh, what to wear on the first day of job, the uh, first day of job of the job as a, as a, a software developer. What are the tools that you need or the tools that you use for a software developer? These are all things that people don't know and you can create content to help solve them. So uh, one thing that I recommend that you do, one easy way to find a niche is if you work a full-time job, create content around your full-time job. Now, obviously you don't wanna call out your business name, but let's say, for example, my next door neighbor is an accountant for a Fortune 500 company. You can create content about being an accountant. And for example, uh, you could talk about what uh, first in, first out is, and first in and last out is, and you can explain the importance of that. While you may think that's boring and uninteresting, there are new business owners, new mom and pop shops that are popping up, and they need to know the difference of LIFO and FIFO, or they may need to know if they should do cost accounting or some of those other accounting terms. You can create content when one relatively easy niche, I think, is just simply creating content about about what what you do all day. Um, he could do a day in the life of a of a corporate accountant. Hey, thanks for the likes that are coming in. I appreciate it. Uh, you could do a day in the life of, of being a, a corporate accountant. Now, obviously, you don't want to call out your your business, but there are things there are are lessons in there that somebody would want to know. Again. Just because you know it doesn't mean that everybody knows it. And one thing that you should realize when it comes to uh, being successful online is basic and simple is, is the only thing that you need to do. Basic and simple. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to talk at a high level. If you are basic, if you are simple with your information and your content, you can be successful online. Most people, a lot of people aren't successful because they overcomplicate the process. And if it, and it's the basics and the simplicity that's uh, successful online, most successful online. Thanks for the likes that are coming in. But um, and, and to, one thing that you can do to, is verify if your idea works by going to YouTube or going to TikTok. For example, we could go to YouTube and we could type in something like um, um, a day in the life of a and then what pops up is real estate agent truck driver web developer geezer i'm not sure what that is software engineer college student but we could say day in the life of a an accountant so what pops up is day in the life of an accountant accounting intern accounting manager and so on but you could do this for your job even if you worked at mcdonald's people will will, will want to know what's the day in the life of working at mcdonald's um, this video here, a day in the life of an accountant has 293,000 views. This person only has 2000 subscribers. So there are tons of views to be had talking about basic stuff, stuff that you think, Hey, everybody knows, or, or you might even think nobody really cares about an accountant. Well, this shows you that 293,000 people, I think that was the number. Yeah. 293,000 people are interested in, in the day in the life. And then you figure, you ask yourself, well, how do you monetize that? Well, you could put together a course. Um, hey, thanks for hopping on. Uh, hey, how's it going over on Facebook? I am doing well. 
uh, can't complain. So then you start asking yourself, okay, this guy's an accountant. How can I monetize being an accountant? Thanks for the likes that are coming in, by the way. Well, if he's an accountant, he could put together a course. He could put together some sort of guide or checklist or planner. Um, he could potentially, are you real live? I believe I'm, I'm real and live. I think so. Ask me a question and, and I'll answer if I'm real live. Um, you can monetize it by creating a course. You can monetize it by doing consulting. If you're on YouTube, you could monetize it with the YouTube Partner Program. You could also monetize it with affiliate marketing. For example, QuickBooks had an affiliate program at one point. If you use QuickBooks for your business, you could say, hey, look, one of the things that I'm, thanks for believing, excuse me, thanks for believing that I'm live. One of the, one of the tools that I use every day to help keep my accounting firm or whatever it is organized is QuickBooks. And then if you're an affiliate for QuickBooks, you can earn a commission. Um, if you own a small business, this is a great way to, to build clients, show them what you do all day, show them the common problems that small business owners have when they try and do accounting themselves. And, you know, just talk about what you do all day. That's a really simple way to get up and running. And it, it could be really, really successful if you do it now. I'm not one of these guys that is going to sell you a bill of goods that's going to tell that that will tell you that hey if you do this boom a bunch of success is going to fall out of the sky. I'm not that type of person. I am the type of person that tells you that if you are consistent um what is your course or learn and how and earn how can possible. Uh rephrase that. I'm not like I was, like I was saying. I'm not the type of guy that's going to tell you that um, success is going to fall out of the sky. And I got to be real careful with my words because I'm on TikTok. I am telling you that if you are consistent and persistent, you can be as successful as you want to be. It may not happen on your first YouTube video. It may not happen on your first blog post. Hell, it might not even happen on your hundredth YouTube video or blog post, but you have to keep being consistent and you have to keep uploading. Most people can't, um, most people are unable to handle creating content and um, not being rewarded for it. A lot of people are used to putting in some work and then getting a reward for it in the form of a payment every two weeks. But when it comes to creating content, when it comes to being successful online, that's not how it works. What happens is, is you put a lot of effort and time up front um, how do you find topics that are basic that get caught up in keeping it simple? Everything is simple and basic. Look around your house. Take And, and I should have mentioned this. Um, walk around your house and take inventory of, of everything that you have. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, we just got a puppy. We've had the puppy for about a week. But we had to go out and buy a bunch of things. We had to buy, obviously, dog food. We had to buy um, a collar and leash and, and a cage and toys and all sorts of stuff, right? Now, I can actually teach someone else. I can tell someone else. Walk around your house, take inventory. Yesterday, I, I cut the grass for the first time. That has me thinking about everything that I should do for my lawn for spring, getting it ready for spring. I should aerate it, aerate it. I should dethatch it, you know, I should be bagging it. And so very basic stuff. Cutting grass is basic. It doesn't get any more basic than cutting grass. However, um, yeah, it's, it's really, really as simple as that. Cutting grass is basic. It doesn't get any more simple than that. However, if you start thinking about all of the solutions and all of the things, all of the different ways that you can monetize it, you can be really successful. For example, there are people that are looking up the size and type of lawnmower that they need to cut five acres. Now, those lawnmowers, those tractors are like $5,000 tractors. And so let's say you are an affiliate for one of those. I watch your video, but I can't understand what you have learned in videos. Please guide me, learn and earn. Yeah, one one second. Um, those tractors are 
like John Deere, those tractors you, that you can get from Lowe's and Home Depot are really expensive. And so if you're an affiliate for a tractor that was $5,000 and you earned a commission on it, that's a pretty good day's work. But again, the most basic stuff out there. Don't, don't even think about, I don't even know what to say. Like, um, I tried filling out the account for offer vault. Is there an easy way to get approved in 72 hours? Um, I'm not sure if, if there's um, a faster way to get, to get approved. Um, yesterday I talked about how to watch, where to watch. People are looking up how to watch different things, where to watch different things. Um, and that was based on me wanting to watch the NFL draft. I wanted to I wanted to know what time the NFL draft started on Thursday and Friday. And so I went and searched that. Now, people that are searching about the NFL draft might be interested in buying the NFL draft hat for their favorite team. Don't overcomplicate it. And don't spend a lot of time thinking about this. Find something that you like to talk about or you want to talk about and move on to the next step. All too often, people that I work with and I, and I speak with, they spend weeks, in some cases months, doing the research. If it takes you more than two days to do the research, you need to move on. Are you using Google Trends? I talked about Google Trends yesterday. And actually, that, that live stream that I did yesterday uh, with Google Trends is, is, uh, is recorded in my Facebook group. But yeah, I talked about Google Trends yesterday. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I mentioned with Google Trends yesterday was natural disasters, um, NFL, MLB, all of all of that stuff. So stuff that's, that's popping up. But you don't even have to use Google Trends. Just think about things that are, are, are occurring. I talked about yesterday, weddings. This is wedding season. Hey, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. This is, this is wedding season. So we could create content about weddings, graduation season, Mother's Day, Father's Day, all, all of this stuff that happens cyclically, cyclically um, we could create content and we could be successful. You don't have to overthink it. You really don't. Um, <laughs> my, my old adage is think long, think wrong. Uh, so it's interesting that everything's happening. Yeah. And not even that. That's not, not even like a high-level thought. We know that every year um, college, high school students are going to graduate. We know that every year college students are going to graduate. We know that every year they're going to come out with um, a new iPhone. You know, it's predictable, right? We know that every year they're going to come out with a brand new latest and greatest product. And then they're going to put marketing behind that product. We can piggyback off of that marketing to be successful. Um, yeah, I, it's it's funny when if you if you get out of your own way and not you as 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 anyone on this um, live stream, but if you get out of your own way, you could be really successful online. Most people aren't successful because they're stuck in their own way. They think that everything is too saturated or oversaturated. They are trying to. Um, um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not calling you out per se, but in, in general, if you get out of your own way and you stop overcomplicating, you stop overthinking it, you stop trying to do the research, you stop, uh, trying to create the po perfect logo. You stop trying to create the perfect color scheme, get out of your own way, start creating content and you'll be, you'll be surprised. You'll be pleasantly surprised. Another way that you can find a niche is to go over to a website like Target or go to a website like Amazon. Do you think a tech review blog is a good idea? It can be if you pair it, if you if you do it the right way. Most people will just want to do the tech review blog and then expect traffic to come. If you want to be successful in, in 2023, you need to go out and get the traffic and bring it back to you, especially with a blog. And the best way to get traffic and bring it back to you is by creating Pinterest pins for each blog post. So anytime you write a blog post, create 10 Pinterest pins for that blog post. And then in the URL for the Pinterest pin, link back to the blog post. Most people aren't willing to take that extra step. They just want to write the blog and then 
And then they wonder why they're not getting any traffic. Well, if you start a brand new blog, it can take three, six, nine months before Google gives you a ranking of any sort. And that ranking might be on page four. But hey, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. If you are willing to go out and take traffic, for example, if you, um, if you start a blog, accompany it with a YouTube video or with a YouTube channel, and then embed your YouTube videos right on, onto your blog. I launched a luxury furniture review website that's linked to my Amazon sending traffic to printers. Yeah, exactly. Do it. 10 Pinterest pins for every blog post. And then you can schedule them using Tailwind. You can use um, Canva to create your Pinterest pins. Canva has a bunch of templates. You just make a few changes. And, and um, the other cool thing with Tailwind now, and I don't know if you guys know this, but Tailwind has an AI feature where if you put in the title of your blog post, and then you put in the URL, it'll actually write the description for you. So it, it will take even less time. Or you can even probably use ChatGPT for that as well. But <clears throat> don't overcomplicate it. Oh, what I was saying with Amazon and Target. Go to Amazon.com, go to Target.com, and take a look at the different categories or departments. And then within those departments, take a look at the sub-departments. Those are all different niches and sub-niches. Again, don't overcomplicate it. Don't overthink it. Think long, think wrong. That's the motto that I use 90% of the time. And get out of your own way. The color scheme doesn't matter. The logo that you spent seven hours on, it don't matter. On on my, I had a, I had a, a blog. I still have the blog about sound bars. That website didn't even have a logo. Because that it doesn't matter. The only thing the logo the logo only matters to you, and that logo logo is bu busy work. That logo is busy work. Easy for me to say. You got to start doing stuff that's actually going to generate revenue, and that logo is not going to generate you any revenue. No, no one's ever going to comment and say, "Hey, that's a really great logo. I'm glad. I'm I'm glad to have seen it." However, what people do say frequently, is that was a really good YouTube video. That was a really good blog post. No one's ever commented me on my on my logos. Or no one's ever commented me on my color scheme. Hey, this color scheme is great. Never. Because that stuff doesn't matter. What matters is creating content. So if you get out of your own way, you identify one problem, it can be bass fishing. It could be paddle ball. It could be pickleball. It could be um, an, another problem that I'm running into. Not and and I I say problem, but um, I don't necessarily mean problem. Summer's coming up, and over the summer it's going to be me and the kids. Now I don't want them sitting in the house watching TV for four hours or six hours per day, so I'm going to have to come up with outdoor games and activities. Um, I'm going to have to maybe take them somewhere. We'll go on a hike or something like that. Again, everything happens, everything's cyclical. And if you can start thinking about problems and situations that people are going to encounter, problems and situations that you're going to encounter, you can create content about it and you can monetize it. You can be successful. Um, uh, let's see. Any questions? So over on Facebook, someone said, I watch your video, like, but I can't understand what you have learned in videos. Please guide me, learn and earn. Um, I'm not really sure what he means, but uh, I think he's referring to my YouTube channel. I do not recommend Google Sites. I don't recommend anything that is free. Now, I'm not running out and telling you that you need to spend a, a bunch of money on your business. I do recommend that you buy your own website, get your own domain name, get your own website. Now, the reason is, is, is free is not always free. Free still has some attachments. There's either you're going to be giving up time, you're going to be giving up money. Now, the problem with free is right now, Google Sites is, is, is free. 
six months from now, they could say, I don't like the type of content you have on your, on your website. I'm going to delete it. Or we decided to, uh, how much you bench? Um, I do sets of two, two, uh, let's see, 255, 265, I think. I do uh, three sets of six. Uh, that's that's normal bench. Decline is three sets of six at 225. And then incline is um, 215. Three sets of six, 215. When I'm not being lazy. <clears throat> You need to try out for the for the Texans. Uh, my team is the Chicago Bears. If I were to try out into and, and get and get dominated, it would it would only be for the Chicago Bears. So, yeah, no, not gonna happen. Anyway, just go. And I I keep saying this, but most people need to understand. Simple. Get out of your own way, and you can be successful online. It's really, it's really as simple as that. It's not easy. I'm not going to sell you a bill of goods and tell you it's easy. I'm going to tell you it's simple. Look at when next time you go on Facebook or next time you go on YouTube, look at the ads that pop up. Those ads are pointing you to a simple solution. They're not overcomplicating it. Everything is, is simple. It's easy. It's basic. And you can be successful. Let's see. What are some other things? Like if I just look around my room, look around my office, I have a lot of stuff to create video. There's these lights that I have. People are going to be asking questions like how to improve your YouTube videos. Thanks for the li likes that are coming in. One of the ways to improve your social media content or your YouTube video is by creating lights. Another thing that I have posted up are like whiteboard panels, right? I wanted to have whiteboard so I could write. The first thing that I bought was like paint for chalk and that didn't work. The next thing I did is I went over to Home Depot and I bought whiteboard panels where I could write on. That's a, a problem and a solution. In our downstairs office, when we converted our classroom into virtual learning for the pandemic, we painted or, or, or my wife found a chalkboard type of thing. Think about all the questions that popped up. And that's another reason why I don't believe in too saturation, oversaturation. There are new situations that pop up with the pandemic. I know it's been about three years since the beginning of the pandemic, but that opened up a whole new world of situation from virtual learning, from working out at home, from um, building out home offices, whole new markets that weren't there six years ago. That's why I don't believe in, in saturation. Um, another question people are going to be asking are the best microphones for podcasting, best microphones for YouTube. Every year they come out with a new microphone. This is a Blue Yeti X. Right now I'm using a, um, a XLR microphone. But again, people are going to be asking questions, basic, simple questions. You answer those basic, simple questions, you can be successful. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it anymore. Do you guys have any questions? Another thing that you can do is you can look at problems that your immediate family is going through. Now, if your your family is having health problems, someone in your family is having health problems, that could be an opportunity to look and see what some of the solutions are. If you have to support a family member, there are things like elevated toilet seats. There are things like um, bed rails. There are things like special beds. Now, again, these are basic things that I, I'm just like looking around my house and I'm finding basic things where I could create content. Um the father-daughter dance is coming up. Again, basic things about suits, matching suits for father-daughter. Um, 
things like that. Prom. And I don't have any kids that are prom age, but I thought about father-daughter dance. We think about prom. We think about all the different stuff that goes around there. When you start thinking, not like a consumer, but start thinking like a creator, your eyes and your world will open up. Because you'll start realizing that there are things that, that there are things that, that there are opportunities that you never even considered before. Another thing that you can do is go to the grocery store and pick up magazines. Now, Bride Magazine, Bride, Bride Guide. I don't intend on getting married again, but Bride Guide, I'm, I'm currently married. I should preface that. Um, bride Guide. Here, um, the grocery store that's not too far from my house has a magazine aisle of maybe 200 different magazines. I walk down the magazine aisle. All of those magazines are different niches. Okay. Bride Guide is a niche. There was another magazine called Weddings in Wisconsin. That's different than Bride Guide. Um, even if we look at this front page here, these are all different um, things that you could create content about. Wedding dresses. Wedding dresses. People are getting married every year. Um, this bouquet. This necklace, this thing in her hair, even the photography, and all of this, um, all of these different words here, opportunity. You flip open this book, Hot Wheels. People want to get married in the, the fancy uh, cars. Destination weddings. I'm looking at this. Destination weddings. Again, stop thinking like a consumer. Start thinking about Whenever you see something, how could I monetize this? I'm looking at some, some full wood blinds here. Those full, full wood blinds are expensive, but monetizable. How to hang your wood blinds. How to know what size wood blinds you need. Do you measure from the inside of the window? Do you measure from the outside? I measured from the inside. Uh, bridesmaid stuff, another niche, sub niche, uh, wedding dresses with pockets, sub niche, um, wedding rings, engagement rings, all different opportunities that you could jump on when you stop thinking like a consumer. Consumers are worried about logos. Consumers are, are worried about pretty colors. Creators um, getting married in Putacana. Do you think you could monetize a destination wedding? Yeah. You could put together, what I would do is I'd put together, if, if my niche was destination wedding, I'd put it, put together a checklist of 20 things you need to pack for your destination wedding. And then <clears throat> now that they have that list, we've got their email address. We could say we could go out and find different affiliate programs for destination weddings. We can find affiliate programs for wedding dresses. We could find all sorts of stuff. But when you start thinking like a creator and not like a consumer, you can be successful. One of the, the question about Google Sites, I kind of went on a side quest there, but the question about Google Sites, spend $3 per month and get domain name and web hosting. Also, you want to get domain name and web hosting for branding. With Google Sites, you send people to sites.google.whateveritis.com. People are going to look at that, and they're going to say, this person isn't serious about their business. However, my domain name, alstingodbolt.com, is, is something that's memorable. And it's, it's something that stands on its own, and it's something that I have forever. It's something that um, would be very difficult to take away from me. Really, the only way that it could be taken away is if I was in violation of some sort of um, policy. Yeah. Um, if I was in violation of some sort of a policy from my web hosting provider or if I just didn't pay the bill. And I plan on paying the bill for my domain name, for, for my name. 
Um, yeah. Any other questions? Is this making sense? I know that I've been talking for 45 minutes or so. Let me know if this is making sense. Good. Because if it's not making sense, we can always we can always back up. I have other magazines here, but I can't find them. I don't know where, what happened to them. But I have other magazines that I, that I would love to show you. I had a magazine on cross-stitching. Uh, I'm just looking around my office for other stuff that we could, you know, we can incorporate. But again, the main thing that I want you to take away from is everything's a niche. Don't overcomplicate it and get out of your own way. You can do those three things. You can be successful online. Uh, should you make different YouTube channels? Yes. Um, I loved your content on the library source on, on YouTube. Uh, yeah, you're you're welcome. Uh, but yeah, you should you should have one YouTube channel per vertical. And in the very beginning, I think that you should only focus on one YouTube channel. Make that first YouTube channel a success and then branch off to different stuff. That second YouTube channel can wait. It can wait six months to a year. Now, uh, what I was saying is this is not going to happen overnight. Okay? If you want to be successful... It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. But that's a good thing. It's good because for most people that get started with an online business, the second they run into a little bit of difficulty, they jump ship. The second it, it's a little bit hard, they jump ship. But not you. You're going to keep going. You're going to be consistent. You're going to be persistent. You're going to keep going past the difficult, challenging time. And that will only happen if you're consistent and persistent. If it were easy, <clears throat> it wouldn't be worth doing. If, it, if starting an online business were easy, it would be like completing surveys. And with surveys, you get paid pennies on the dollar. So it wouldn't be worth it. It wouldn't be worth it for us. But we want this to be challenging because it gets, it gets rid of all of the the, the dead weight. It gets rid of the people that were looking for easy and simple and basic. We want it to be challenging. Now, it will become less challenging over time. I have far less challenges now than I did when I first started. That's partly because I have experience. I, I know what to expect. I know what to do. But you want this to be difficult. Okay. Stop looking for easy. Nothing grinds my gears more than when people are asking me for the easiest way to make money online. I tell them to go find a different YouTube channel because I don't create that type of content. Um, but you can be successful. As long as you're consistent and persistent, you could be successful. Um. <clears throat> Any other questions? We've been on for about 49 minutes. My limit's about an hour. After an hour, I run out of um, good stuff to tell you. <laughs> Some people may say I run out of good stuff after about 20 minutes, but um, I think my limit's about an hour, unless people are asking questions and then I can give different, more relevant information. But anybody can do this. Everybody can do this. Everybody should do it because there are 4 billion people. Uh, how long did it take to start making consistent income? That's a good question. There are 4 billion people that have access to the internet. So why do I say that? Because there are millions of problems out there and you could pick one and be wildly successful. So what do you define as consistent income? $500 a month? thousand dollars per month what do you how do you define consistent income full-time income which what's your definition because I was doing like five hundred dollars a month um, maybe four or five years ago so don't have to work a nine to five. Now, 
before I was making eighty four thousand dollars a year before I left my my full time job. I left my full time job three years ago. I have been doing affiliate marketing for six years now, seven years. My kids are seven, so about six, seven years. Okay, so three years. If, if simple math, about three years. But I was making 85K a year. If someone was making half that, they could probably leave sooner. It may take you longer. It may take you shorter. I don't know how long it's going to take you because I don't, I don't know how many mistakes you're going to make along the way. I don't know how consistent you are. But I'm not going to tell you that you could leave your full-time job in six months. I don't believe in that. You could, it's possible there are people that have done it, but that's not the norm for most people. Most people will, it will take them three years. It'll take them five years. For some people, they never get to that point. I was fortunate enough that I was in a position, um, it's been three years. Wow, time flies when you're, when you're booked and busy. But three years, I would say, give or take. Any other questions? But think about how much easier life would be with an extra $500 in your pocket. $500 is, is a for us, a, a grocery bill with five people. Um, it could be a car note. It could be rent for some people. My first, my first apartment in college was $420. It was a one-bedroom apartment. It, it could be a car note. It could be rent. It could be groceries. It could be the utility bill. But just starting and, and hitting that first metric of five hundred dollars would make it, it would certainly be gas. Hundred dollars, an extra hundred dollars per month would be gas. All of this is designed to make your life less complex, and that's what's most important. Take away a challenge. And, and it'll take, a, take away a lot of stress. Extra $500 per month would take away a lot of stress for a lot of people. Because that comes out to what? Um, $6,000, I believe, a year. So, yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? Awesome. Um be sure to like, comment, share, follow, subscribe. Uh, this account, for whatever reason, is shadow banned on, on TikTok. If you go look at my videos, a video that I uploaded six hours ago, I guess, at this point, maybe three hours ago, has zero views. So this account shadow banned. But um, like this video, share, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. If you would, I'd appreciate it. I am on YouTube under Alston Godbolt. I'm on Facebook. Just look up Alston Godbolt. I'm Alston Godbolt everywhere. Everywhere you want to be, except for here. My first account got shut down. But, um, yeah, I think that's going to be it for me. I appreciate everyone that hopped on. Uh, be sure to follow this account if you want. Be sure to share, subscribe to all of that good stuff. Well, you guys have a great night, and we will see you tomorrow.